The headline this morning, Justin Herbert sets passing mark for three seasons into the league, which is amazing. He's had two coaches. One got fired, and we don't like this one. His offensive line was the worst in the league when he took over, and now it's injury riddled. Wasn't good last night in the right side. Uh, his receivers are never healthy until last night, and you saw what he did. So it's very interesting. The legit stars and the posers. We saw separation. Geno Smith without a run game. Pretty average, isn't he? Tua under pressure last couple of weeks. He's bad, isn't he? Please judge quarterbacks when life isn't perfect, when their O-line's banged up, when they're under pressure, when they're trailing late in games. Tua is small and brittle and not very athletic. Has he ever thrown a deep ball to Tyreek Hill that wasn't underthrown? But he has a clever, smart, smart head coach and unbelievable wide receiver, so he has fooled a lot of people. I had three friends at the game last night, and two of them were texting me driving home, and they're like, oh, it's actually worse in person. There's guys wide open for the Dolphins. He just can't get the ball to him. The, the Chargers, not much open, and Herbert's going to still have the night of his life. Justin Herbert was under constant duress. He's never had a coach we like. And he's breaking Andrew Luck's records. Justin Herbert deniers, to me, are election deniers. Can't reason with him. Just nod and walk away from the conversation. And bury that invitation to the holiday party, even if you're related to him. There are four absolutely great quarterback talents in this league, and they're all in their prime. Mahomes, Burrow, Josh Allen, and Justin Herbert. Some have a great coach. Some don't. Some have great weapons. Some, like Herbert's, are never healthy. Aaron Rodgers was there. He's declining. Jalen Hurts may get there. He's ascending. Not there yet. But those four are simply different. What I worry about, though, with Justin Herbert is the Chargers. Will he become the Nolan Ryan of the NFL? An iconic and beloved awe-inspiring flamethrower. And then after all those years, he'll be slightly above 500 with some really cool records. That's what I worry about. With Tua, I wonder if he can stay healthy. With Herbert, I wonder, will his franchise screw him over? That's the kind of talent he is. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, brains A+. Plus. He was a 4-2 biology major who became a tutor. Arm A+, plus. size A+, plus. temperament A+. Plus. Listen, I got nothing against Tua. There's a reason the Dolphins tried to trade him for Deshaun Watson, sat him behind Ryan Fitzpatrick, and wanted to get rid of him for 44-year-old Tom Brady. Coaching can really elevate a player, Tua, or disintegrate a quarterback, and we've seen that with Andrew Luck. I find myself with her doing Herbert doing this, crossing my fingers. God Chargers, get him a legit head coach. Get him an offensive head coach. Get him a great staff. Somebody please draft a right tackle. That's all I worry about. I thought they had a very good game plan last night. Miami was beat up on the back end. I don't think he's an awful coach, but I do think when you get a Justin Herbert, or a Patrick Mahomes, or a Joe Burrow, or a Josh Allen, a pretty good coach is probably not where you want to land. You want to get him an Andy Reid. You want to get him a Sean Payton. You want to get him somebody that's on the right side of the ball and next level. Because Justin Herbert, that is a once in a franchise player. All right, the Cowboys won and didn't look very good. And so... The way this industry works is Cowboys win, they're great. Cowboys lose, they're terrible. Cowboys win, barely, they're... No. <sighs> Dak Prescott, his record when he's asked to throw 35 times or more is 16-24. and 24. When Patrick Mahomes is asked to throw 35 times or more, he's 43-15. and 15. They're playing the same position. They're not the same kind of player. For Dak, for Kirk Cousins, for Tua, you can't ask him to throw 39 times. That's just not what they are. That's why I won't bury the Cowboys today for their performance against Houston and why I didn't buy into the avalanche last week. 
What the Cowboys didn't get yesterday was a great Micah Parsons day. They didn't have a sack. They didn't get a phenomenal C.D. Lamb game. And so they needed more from Dak. And that's not who Dak is. He's a B-plus quarterback. I mean, Houston's the worst team in the league. They were down two corners, had a rookie safety, and the other guys playing were backups. Dak had two picks. (laughs) Dak takes it to another level when somebody is great. Mike is great. Zeke is great. Pollard's great. CeeDee Lamb is great. And then he can ride that wave to a victory. It's all circumstantial. Similar with Kirk Cousins. He won in Buffalo. Remember that game he won in Buffalo a few weeks ago? Who was great? Justin Jefferson may have had the game of the year for a wide receiver. It doesn't work that way for Joe Burrow. Jamar Chase was hurt. He won. Oh, Joe Mixon's hurt. Star back. He won. Oh, they're both out. He won again. His own line's terrible. He got to a Super Bowl. I don't go high and low on the Cowboys. They're an Adam Sandler film. You know, I kind of know what I'm getting. It's not going to win an Oscar. Some are better than others. Sometimes you're like, uncut gems. That's pretty good. And there are times you watch and you're like, yeah, eight minutes in, they don't have a storyline. But a movie theater CEO like Sandler greenlit it and they can't make any money. I don't get high. I don't get low. If you're asking Dak to throw 39 times and he doesn't get a great game from the defense and a lot of sacks, and this is what it looks like. This is exactly what it looks like. We said this. There's two seasons in the NFL. There is pre-Thanksgiving. A lot of quarterbacks look great. Not a lot of film on them. They've got a new coach like Tua. The weather is warm. A lot of home games. Bad opponent. Then there's post-Thanksgiving. Gets a little cold. Gets a little windy. Gets a little chilly. Everybody's got film. And for those quarterbacks, oh, your left tackle's missing. And your right tackle's missing. And your tight end's missing. This is the separation of posers and players. Now guys are hurt. Now the team needs you to throw 39 times, Dak. Now, Tua, not everybody's healthy on the back end, and you make it into a shootout. This weekend was the great example. Ryan Tannehill exposed, Trevor Lawrence through the roof. The real talents are winning this weekend. Mahomes won, Josh Allen won, Herbert won, Burrow won. And by the way, we'll talk about Brock Purdy later. He won. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.